Hey, hey, my name is Kim Leotach Lang, and I like to learn, make, and teach stuff. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made a giant egg photography prop for my dear wife, Nadine. Now, it didn't all go to plan, and I've learnt a lot in the process, which I will share as we go through it. To start with, since this is a paper mache project, I'm gonna need some wheat paste. My wheat paste recipe is a four to one water to flour mix. That's plain uh, white flour, and I've put in a substantial portion of salt as well to lower the risk of mold. This is a two liter batch, and once it's wazzed and mixed up, you need to bring it to the boil, stirring constantly, and keep it there until the germ of the wheat has dissolved completely and cooked. Cleanup should be done immediately, of course. This is, after all, glue we are making. Our local butcher declined to sell me butcher's paper, oddly enough, so I bought 14 kilos of it for, for about what I was prepared to pay him. Now, I wouldn't say a guillotine is required for this, but it certainly does speed up the cutting. These giant balloons were found for about a dollar each on eBay. tape down the knot to smooth the surface. And here begins the first of many layers of paper mache. Here also is the first lesson of hindsight. If, like I do, you want the inside of your shape to be usable and visible, you start with small pieces there. You won't be able to do uh, a surface as smooth as you can get it on the outside on the inside, but you can certainly make your job easier for later on by starting small on in the first layers. Here's the second lesson of hindsight. As you can see there, I've got some wrinkles in the surface and that is because I've left it to dry overnight and the balloon has shrunk in the cool of the evening. And although I'm powering through and paper mashing over it, it did expand back out and I would have lost those wrinkles if I had just let it warm up a bit before I began. As it happens, rather than detracting from the surface of the egg, those wrinkles added to it. However, they did cause structural problems inside it. It took nine layers of paper mache to complete this egg and the outer three were done with this high quality office paper that gave a, a smoother, whiter, thinner layer. As you can see here, each layer is really more than one layer since to get a full overlap often takes as much as three layers in some parts. Once paper mache was complete, I left it to dry for a few days and then I got into it with a sander and I got a really beautiful smooth finish on it. Unfortunately, those few days weren't quite enough for it to have completely cured and my surface did buckle a little bit more over the coming week. It was important to me that my egg didn't look cartoony. Although I couldn't go for true realism, I wanted something approaching it. And I'm making myself some reference eggshell to use in carving the splits. Having drawn my cracks, I drilled a pilot hole which popped the balloon and began cutting with the jigsaw. Having decided pilot holes were a bit too big and ugly, I brought out the scary little circular saw attachment for my Dremel and had a go at using it in as a replacement, which worked fine. Peeling all the balloon off proved quite tedious. I decided to make the interior membrane of the egg out of white fabric which I glued in with wood glue and I was hopeful that once cut into shape this would form a seat for the other half of the egg to sit onto and I'd still be able to close the egg. 
Once the fabric had dried in place, I went into the interior side of both halves with a thick layer of white copy paper mache. Once that had dried, I cut the fabric to imitate the jagged edges of the membrane in a cracked egg. It was only once all these layers had had a few days to cure that a major problem revealed itself. As the interior coats had dried, they had warped the shells in different ways and they no longer fit together. Also visible here is another problem that had manifested itself. My beautiful smooth surface had started being broken by little fissures and cracks and bubbles that were coming in up to the surface from underneath as it cured. By this point I was too invested to start again, so I glued the cracks that had formed around the edges together and cut the warped piece into some smaller pieces that would hopefully still fit together and look like cracked eggshell. I'm painting the interior with a nice bright white interior acrylic. The interior and edges took two thick coats. For the outer shell I used the white paint as a base and added burnt sienna and yellow oxide. The outer shell also took two coats with some extra attention paid to the edges. The warped shape was becoming more and more obvious. Thanks to a lot of extra schoolwork, I missed my pre-Easter deadline, so despite all the effort, it was still some weeks before we got them over to the studio and took some photos using them. Although I'm personally not particularly happy with the egg itself, I am very pleased with the photos and I'm glad that it works as a prop. I learn a great deal from it and I am seriously considering putting what I learned to use, making a smaller version suitable for baby photography. And that's it for this project. I hope you, like me, learned something from this build. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. I love that feedback. If you've had a shot at making your own giant egg at some point, I'd love to see it. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back with more content next week. See ya.